Your boy's so desperate for content, he's reading writing prompts now. <laughs> Whatever, let's just read it. Temples are built for gods. Knowing this, a farmer builds a small temple to see what kind of god turns up. Arpo built a temple in his field. A humble thing. Some stones stacked up to make a carn. And two days later, a god moved in. Hope your harvest god, Arpo said, and set up an altar and burnt two stalks of wheat. It'd be nice, you know. He looked down at the ash smeared on the stone. The rocks all laid askew and coughed and scratched his head. <clears throat> I know it's not much, he said, his straw hat in his hands, but I'll do what I can. It'd be nice to think there's a god looking after me. The next day, he left a pair of figs. The day after that, he spent ten minutes of his morning seated by the temple in prayer. On the third day, the god spoke. You should go to a temple in the city, the god said. Its voice was like the rustling of the wheat, like the squeaks of field mice running through the grass. A real temple, a good one. Get some real gods to bless you. I'm no one much myself, but I might be able to put in a good word. It plucked a leaf from the tree and sighed. I mean, not to be rude, I like this temple. It's cozy enough. The worship's been nice, but you can't honestly believe that any of this is going to bring you anything. This is more than... I was expecting when I built it, Arpo said, laying down his scythe and lowering himself to the ground. Tell me, what sort of god are you anyway? I'm of the fallen leaves, it said, the worms that churn beneath the earth, the boundary of forest of the field, a first hint of frost before the first snow falls, the skin of an apple as it yields beneath your teeth. I am a god of a dozen different nothings, scraps that lead to rot, momentary glimpses, a change in the air, and then it's gone. The god heaved another sigh. There's no point in worshiping that, not like war, or the harvest, or the storm. Save your prayers for the things beyond your control, good farmer. You're so tiny in the world, so vulnerable. Best to pray to a greater thing than me. Arpo plucked a stalk of wheat and flattened it beneath his teeth. I like this sort of worship fine, he said. So if you don't mind, I think I'll continue. Do what you will, said the god, and withdrew deeper into the stones. But don't say I never warned you otherwise. Arpo would say a prayer before the morning's work, and the god contemplated the trees in silence. Days passed like that, and weeks, and then the storm rolled in. Black and bold and blustering, it flooded Arpo's fields, shook the tiles from his roof, smote his olive tree, and set it to cinder. The next day, Arpo and his sons walked among the wheat, salvaging what they could. The little temple had been strewn across the field, and so when the work was done for the day, Arpo grabbed the stones and pieced them back together. Useless work, the god whispered, but came creeping back inside the temple regardless. There wasn't a thing I could do to spare you from this. We'll be fine, Arpo said. The storm's blown over. We'll rebuild. Don't have much of an offering for you today, he said, and lay down some ruined wheat. But I think I'll shore up on this thing's foundations tomorrow. How about that? The god rattled around in the temple inside. A year passed, and then another. The temple had layered walls of stones. A roof of woven twigs, Arapo's neighbors chuckled as they passed it. 
some of their children left fruit and flowers, and then the harvest failed. The gods withdrew their bounty. In Arpo's field, the wheat sprouted thin and brittle. People wailed and tore their robes, slaughtered lambs and spilled their blood, looked upon the ground with haunted eyes and went to bed hungry. Arpo came and sat by the temple. The flowers wilted now, the fruit shriveled nubs, Arpo's ribs showing through his chest, his hands still shaking, and murmured out a prayer. There is nothing here for you, said the god, huddling in the dark. There is nothing I can do. There is nothing to be done. It shivered and spat out its words. What is this temple but another burden to you? We, Arpo said, and his voice wavered. So it's a lean year, he said. We've gone through this before. We'll get through this again. So we're hungry, he said. We've still got each other, don't we? And a lot of people prayed to other gods, but it didn't protect them from this. No, he said, and shook his head, and laid down some shriveled weeds on the altar. No, I think I like our arrangement fine. There will come worse said the god, from the hollows of the stone. And there will be nothing I can do to save you. The years passed. Arpo rested a wrinkled hand upon the temple of stone and some days spent an hour there, lost in contemplation with the god. And one fateful day, from across the wine-dark seas, came war. Arpo came stumbling into his temple now, his hand pressed against his gut, anointing the holy site with his blood. Behind him his wheat fields burned, and the bones burned black in them. He came crawling on his knees to a temple of hewed stone, and the god rushed out to meet him. I could not save them, said the god, its voice a low wail. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm... I'm so, so sorry. The leaves fell, burning from the trees. A soft, slow rain of ash. I've done nothing. All these years and I've done nothing for you. Shh, Arpo said, tasting his own blood. His vision blurring. He propped himself up against the temple, forehead pressed against the stone in prayer. Tell me, he mumbled. Tell me again, what sort of god are you? I, the god said, and reached out, cradling Arpo's head. He closed his eyes and he spoke. I am of the fallen leaves, it said, and conjured up the image of them. The worms that churn beneath the earth the boundary of forest and of the field, the first hint of frost before the first snow falls, the skin of an apple as it yields beneath your teeth. Arpo's lips parted in a smile. I am the god of a dozen different nothings, it said. The petals in bloom that lead to rot, the momentary glimpses change in the air. Its voice broke and it wept. Before it's gone. Beautiful, Arpo said, his blood staining the stone seeping into the earth. All of them. They were all so beautiful. And as the fields burned and the smoke blotted out the sun, as men were trotted in the press, and the bloody war raged on. As the heavens let loose their wrath upon the earth, Arpo the Sower lay down in his humble temple, his head sheltered by the stones, and returned home to his god. Sora found the temple with the bones in it, the roof falling in upon them. Oh, poor god, she said, 
with no one to bury your last priest. Then she paused, because she was far away. Or is this how the dead are honored here? The god roused from its contemplation. His name was Arpo, it said. He was a sower. Sora startled a little because she had never before heard the voice of a god. How can I honor him? she asked. Bury him, the god said, beneath my altar. All right, Sora said, and went to fetch her shovel. Wait, the god said when she got back and began collecting the bones from among the broken twigs and fallen leaves. She laid them out on a roll of undyed wool, the only cloth she had. Wait, the god said. I cannot do anything for you. I'm not the god of anything useful. Sora sat back on her heels and looked at the altar to listen to the god. When the storm came and destroyed his wheat, I could not save it, the god said. When the harvest failed, and he was hungry. I could not feed him. When the war came, the god's voice faltered. When, when the war came, I could not protect him. He came bleeding from the battle to die in my arms. Sora looked down again at the bones. I think you're the god of something very useful, she said. What? the god asked. Sora carefully lifted the skull into the cloth. You're the god of Arpo. Generations passed. The village recovered from its tragedies. Homes rebuilt. Gardens replanted. Wounds healed. The old man who once lived on the hill and spoke to stone and rubble had long since been forgotten. But the temple stood in his name. Most believed it to be empty as the god who resided there had long since fallen silent. Yet any who passed the decaying shrine felt an ache in their hearts, as though mourning for a lost friend. The cold that seeped from the temple entrance laid their spirits low and warded off any potential visitors. Save for the rare and especially oblivious children who would leave tiny clusters of pink and white flowers that they picked from the surrounding meadow. The god sat in his peaceful home, staring at the distant road. No pedestrians, workhorses, and carriages. Raining leaves that swirled around, bustling feet. How long had it been? The world had progressed without him, for he knew there was no help to be given. The world must be a cruel place that even the useful gods have abandoned. If farms can flood, harvests can run barren, and homes can burn, he thought. He had come to understand that humans are senseless creatures who would pray to a god that cannot grant wishes or bless upon them good fortune, who would maintain a temple and bring offerings with nothing in return, who would share their company and meditate with such a fruitless deity who would bury a stranger without the hope for profit. What bizarre, futile kindness they had wasted on him. What wonderful, foolish, virtuous, hopeless creatures humans were. So he painted the sunset with yellow leaves, enticed the worms to dance in their soil, Flourished the boundary between forest and field with blossoms and berries. Christian the air with a biting cold before the winter came. Ripened the apples with a crisp. Red freckles to break under sinking teeth. And a dozen other nothings in memory of the man who once praised the god's work on his dying breath. Hello, god of every humble beauty in the world, called a familiar voice. The squinting corners of the god's eyes wept down onto curling lips. Arpo, he whispered, for his voice was hoarse from its hundred-year mutism. 
I am the god of devotion, of small kindnesses, of unbreakable bonds. I am the god of selfless and unconditional love, of everlasting friendships and trust. Arpo avowed, soothing the other with every word. That's wonderful, Arpo. He responded between tears. I'm so happy for you. Such a powerful figure will certainly need a grand temple. Will you leave to the city to gather more worshippers? You'll be adored by all. No, Arapo smiled. Farther than that? To the capital, then. Thank you for visiting here before your departure. No, I will not go there either. Arpo shook his head and chuckled. Farther still, what ambitious goals you must have. There's no doubt in my mind you will succeed, though. The Elder God continued. Uh, actually, interrupted Arpo. I'd like to stay here if you'll have me. The other God was struck speechless. Why would you want to live here? I am the god of unbreakable bonds and everlasting friendships, and you are the god of Arpo. <sighs> you guys, I definitely didn't almost cry two times while reading this. Okay, all right, okay, yep. Just so we're on the just so we're on the same page here. Just want to let you know about that. Okay, all right, okay. Well, I'm gonna go back and do normal things now. Normal things that aren't crying at Tumblr posts. All right, that's cool. Bye.